The watch I'm holding in my hands here is the Dorenzo DLZ02. We're actually going to be reviewing a new watch that's going to hit Kickstarter in a couple of weeks, the Dorenzo DLZ03. But I wanted to introduce this one to you first because I think it's important. In my opinion, this was the microbrand watch of the year 2019. It had a Kickstarter campaign around about Christmas, end of the year 2018. And uh, despite running at the worst time of the year when most campaigns fail, it did quite well. Well, we stocked this in the microbrand store and it sold out so quickly, went out like hotcakes, couldn't get any more. Um, and it's uh, been a well-received watch, a lot of buzz, a lot of talk, a small run limited edition, um, you know, that was basically selling out at, at full retail price, no problem at all. And uh, was a super popular watch that um, a lot of people regret not getting. So I wanted to talk about this because we're going to be talking about Lorenzo's next model. Uh, and I won't go and review this because I've obviously got a review out there already in the past and you can't get this anymore. Uh, and this is my own personal one that I kept uh, for myself when we sold the others. But to just give you a, a flavor for what made this so special, a couple of, just to pick a couple of points. For example, the uh, case shape here is a very unusual a concave case that is basically curving inwards which is really nicely accentuated by the combination of brushed and polished finishes the chamfered edge here is polished uh, which you do get on other watches too but with that curve it just adds this extra special special attention to detail here uh, and the dial itself is a gorgeous sunburst deep disc dial it is a uh, swiss movement is also swiss made and the brand is swiss as well so it's as swiss as can be but the indices are just completely unique on this watch it's a lovely sa uh, sandwich dial design um, based upon uh, the theme or the uh, story behind this watch is based upon uh, the bugattis of the 1930s with very nice curvy kind of classic cars so hence you get a rally strap this i think is actually an aftermarket strap that i put on but pretty similar to the original strap <clears throat> and um you know you've just got a gorgeous design and the attention to details are outstanding things like the uh, loom circle on the second hand will pass over the exact center of the date window here where you've got the number seven and uh, it's very well balanced design completely unique uh, came in a wide range of colors, including one with an unusual orange loom. Uh, it's just a great watch. So won't spend any more time on that. I just wanted to introduce this first so you have an idea of the capabilities of the uh, company. Also, it's worth talking about because we're going to be talking about these new watches coming out on Kickstarter on February the 12th, the Dorenzo DRZ03. Now these sold out, you can't get them anymore. People are now into Dorenzo, so I suspect this is going to be popular too. It's also a gorgeous watch. I want to add this exact color combination to my personal collection, so I'll be getting one of these. We'll either be carrying it in the microbrand store and I'll keep one, or if we don't carry it, I will definitely be getting one on Kickstarter because I'm not going to miss out on this. And I think a number of other people have gone wow about one of these colors as well. It might not be kind of quite to the same level as a watch of the year that this one was, but it's a super collectible watch, extremely well done, uh, that I think is going to be a big hit as well. So uh, you want to get the best pricing, then get it on Kickstarter. And if you miss out, by all means, check in on the microbrand store. We will be probably trying to stock this one because I'm absolutely in love with it as well. There are going to be a choice of three colors. These two are prototypes. We do not have a prototype of the third color, which is going to be burgundy. I do have another burgundy watch here, however. So you can kind of get a rough idea. Oh, it's going to be like these, but it's going to be some color that's somewhat similar to this one. This is a also a microbrand watch and Orion Sylph, which uh, is in my personal collection. So um, these watches, uh, you can probably guess from this one in particular why it's called the Eclipse, the DRZ03 Eclipse, kind of looks like an Eclipse. You might not notice it so much on this one, but they all have uh, two halves to the dial. The outer half is a Fume dial, which means it's a gradient dial, starts with a darker color on the outside and moves to a slightly lighter color on the inside which is a gorgeous effect and um, they're absolutely gorgeous watches. I won't get into all the homages that are in here, but it's not just a homage to one particular watch. There's two or three different unrelated watches in here, but it's become its own unique thing. So again, I think uh, Durant's have done a wonderful job here 
It's another Swiss SW200-1 uh, automatic movement. Uh, this is another 40 millimeter watch, and this one's quite dressy, actually. So you could wear this with a business suit, no problem. The height on this is only 12 and a half millimeters, which is absolutely fantastic for a dive watch, 200 meter rated dive watch. Normally you would expect something that's 16 millimeters or so. This will wear extremely well uh, in a semi-dressy situation. Uh, it's a very well balanced design. Again, Maybe individual parts might not be unique, such as, oh, I've seen some of these uh, hands before on a watch, or I've seen the indices on a watch. It's not maybe as unique as this one, which is why I don't think it's going to be a watch of the year. But it's still gorgeous, and this uh, kind of eclipse effect is really nice as well, and not something uh, that's... Uh, makes a unique combination on this watch. And I love this color the most. The reason I picked this one is the kind of kind of dark black going to kind of a metallic white almost color goes so well with a bracelet. So it will be coming on a bracelet. I have been told that it's not going to be this exact bracelet. Uh, they're going to make a couple of changes. They're going to change the end links uh, to be shorter uh, and go better with the watch. I think the shape of the end links is fine. Um, there are some things I don't like about this bracelet that I'll get into. It's also going to come with screwed pins, which is a welcome difference because these pins here are not screwed. Um, they look like they're capsule pins, but we'll see. Um, if the final ones are going to be screwed, it really doesn't matter. Um, but the size is absolutely wears extremely well on a very versatile uh, range of... Um, uh, not range of wrists. People only have one wrist size. This size works well on a wide range of wrists. So even though it's a 40 millimeter diameter uh, and a 48 millimeter lug to lug length, which means it could wear well on a six and a half inch wrist or, or bigger, a uh, 20 millimeter lug width. I actually have a somewhat larger wrist. I, I'm wearing something. I think this watch I've got on right now is a 47 millimeter diameter or something like that. But it wears quite well on my wrist. And I tend to wear 42 or larger. I prefer 44 millimeter watches as my ideal size. Yeah, I think I'm just going to take this strap or this watch off. I think this one wears really well on my wrist. So it will work well on a uh, medium wrist, a large wrist and a small wrist. And there's not too many watches you can say that about. So I'm really happy with this. So this is on a seven and a half inch, 19 centimeter wrist. And it's it's wearing really nicely. So let's talk about this bracelet a little bit more. It will be coming with a bracelet and it will be coming with some, um, uh, they, they say Marine Nationale nylon strap, but I think it's going to be this, this style of strap because these are the ones we have in the sample. So let's talk about the bracelet. Obviously I didn't like the fact that these are not uh, screwed links or, or easy uh, push links, but if the final ones are going to be screwed, that's fine. Um, there's a, what I don't like though is the uh, buckle. <laughs> I mean, it's a nice signed buckle and that's laser etched and a milled clasp, so that's fine. Uh, but it's supposed to come with a diver's extension, which means you can usually pull these out. And this is a pressed uh, diver's extension, I guess, that doesn't work particularly well. You've got four micro adjustments, but you can't actually use this. Uh, fourth one because this is too long and wouldn't won't fit in here if you push everything along a little bit so you actually only have three micro adjustments that are usable uh, which is a bit of a faux pas there um, I guess the fourth one is just for looks or wasn't really well thought out perhaps but when I hear a diver's extension I uh, guess I'm being a bit spoilt with some other watches I expected something where I can have a, a ratcheting adjustment to uh, make a change on the fly without having to use any tools. And this is literally just going to be a uh, one size only pull out divers extension that gives you uh, an extra inch and a half or so. Um, I guess, you know, uh, it's a little bit disappointing to have it like that. But again, it's not... Um, a huge negative, but when we're in this kind of a price range, I'll talk about the prices in a second uh, on these watches. Uh, I guess on the pre-order, $499. I guess that's not something too much to complain about. Uh, and the full retail price is $699, uh, which I think these will still do extremely well at. 
Uh, but still, I'm a little bit disappointed with that clasp, the fact that you can't use that fourth hole. It's just why even have it? And uh, I really would have liked to have seen a ratcheting diver's extension, uh, either kind of a glide lock style, on, like on a Rolex, or a push button style where you can pull out into like three or four different stop positions. That would have been just perfect and made a much better watch. There are cheaper watches than this that have those features. So uh, not a huge negative because it's a very nice bracelet. The watch goes very well on a bracelet. And the clasp itself, apart from the diver's extension, is your, your typical um, safety clasp. Works quite well. Don't have any problem with it at all. So uh, no issues with the watch uh, bracelet otherwise. But I guess I'm just picking on that diver's extension. Because when I read diver's extension, I got all excited. And I'm not too impressed with that. So that's my first negative with the watch. Uh, I'll give you my second negative as well. Which is a little bit unfair if you're looking at the watch standing on its own merits. But compared to the DRZ02, uh, I'm a little bit disappointed with the case. It's a nice case. It's nicely balanced. You've got a, or Again, you've got a combination of a polished chamfered edge and a nice brushed finished. But it's a little bit of a mundane case. Imagine if they'd have had kept that concave uh, shape to it or, or, you know, carried that over from the last watch or you did something a little bit different. I would have liked to have seen that. Again, this is not a negative for the watch. I quite like the case on this one. I'm just comparing it to its predecessor. So a couple of negatives there. Not major negatives, either of them. Neither of those are showstoppers. Neither of those will put me off buying this watch. If this was the exact watch I would be getting, I'd be happy with it as a watch to add to my collection. But a couple of little niggles, nevertheless. Um, there are a few more niggles I do have, and it's a really a strap issue more than anything. I'm looking forward to seeing the new bracelet. I've seen a picture of it, um, but I uh, really don't want to talk about that because I don't know if that's the final version. Uh, but it's looking a little bit better than this one. And if it's going to have screwed links, that is awesome. So hopefully, uh, maybe we'll get lucky and get a better diver's extension on it too. So again, not too big an issue. And I also like this style of strap. If this is the style of strap it's coming with, it's kind of like a French style NATO strap. You just hooks over and it's elasticated nylon. Um, so it actually could look pretty nice on a wrist and these wear super comfortably and you don't have to kind of keep folding back the end of the NATO strap. So, you know, definitely uh, something that a lot of people like. This is a new style NATO strap that's becoming more and more popular. So like the style of strap, no complaints there. Uh, what I don't like are the colors, I guess. So this black color is uh, supposedly coming on this, uh, which is a green strap. And it's nice to have a contrasting color. If everything is black, it kind of makes sometimes stops the dial from popping but there's nothing to tie any part of this strap in with the watch this yellow is a complete yellow color compared to the cream it's not really even the same family so i felt this didn't do too well and if you were going to have a strap this black one would go so much nicer so uh even though uh maybe uh it doesn't make the dial pop quite so much you know, you've got a white rather than the cream, but at least the black ties in. So I wasn't too happy with uh, this particular color strap. I don't think anybody else is complaining about it. Maybe this is me being nitpicky, but that was another negative. And on this strap here, are these straps that we're actually seeing is actually a strap you can pick up from AliExpress for about $10. They're really nice straps. Don't let, they don't let the price put you off. The fact that it's a low price, these are excellent straps. I, there is actually a third color, or well, three or four color, other choice, so three or four other choices of color you can get in these straps. And there's a blue color that's almost the same as the uh, lighter blue on the outer half of the dial here. That really would have accentuated the watch um, a little bit, I think. The dial probably would still pop because of the darker blue on the inner disc. Um, so I think that would have been a nicer color choice. Well, that's just me being nitpicky. I always like to point out things in the review that I like and that I don't like because I always give a completely candid review. I actually love this watch. And I think overall the proportions are elegant. It's really well done. You could wear this with a business suit. 
it's uh, some unusual combination of features. Uh, at the same time, definitely the straps have not kind of excited me. So the bracelet, um, I've already talked about, talked about the color of these straps. There may be a kind of a tropic style uh, strap, a rubber strap or, or a silicon rubber strap that these will come with. I was sent these to review um, and basically, well, you know, not to impress. This is a $5 strap. I see so many brands carry this. I've seen this at AliExpress a number of other places. Um, looks decent enough, but it's a, a cheap strap. I would rather they, if it was me, pass on the rubber strap and maybe get a better diver's extension on the buckle here. Put the money into that that you would have spent on the strap, you know, five more dollars. And then this could be a really uh, gorgeous functional strap with a very nice diver's extension. Anyway, that's my take on it. Uh, these are great watches. Um, these obviously are a little bit beaten up. They're review copies that have been to other people and are going to go elsewhere in, uh, later on. They came in this beaten up wallet just to show you how badly the watches themselves are beaten up. But let's talk about the packaging. Um, the fact that I was sent this tells me uh, that they're going to use the same packaging that they did on the DRZ02. So I have a, a box here. Exclude, uh, excuse this marking. This is just me labeling my own boxes. So the DRZ02 uh, came with uh, an instruction booklet and warranty, pretty much. Um, so you've got an international warranty, uh, limited edition, the serial number there, and also on, engraved on the back of the watch. And then obviously this one's in a little bit better condition than the beaten up one that I received. But you've got a very nice Dorenzo logo here. It's actually a very nice travel wallet for watches. You can put a couple of watches in here um, and a warranty, you know, warranty card, spare links, whatever. A couple of watches and maybe a tool in the middle. It's kind of hard because it folds in the middle, uh, but you can certainly use th these two sides for it. Um, so it's um, a nice travel roll uh, leather, as you could tell from by the one that's kind of uh, a little bit beaten up. And this is my own personal one that I kept, so I guess I've had this for the better part of a year now. Um, so it's keeping pretty well. Um, so you'll get a travel roll and uh, the bracelet and a NATO strap, and you may get a rubber strap as well, a uh, or a silicon rubber style strap. And this style of strap, it looks decent enough, but it's nothing, nothing special. Very soft, very comfortable, so very functional. Uh, not very impressive buckle, very thin as well. I like other styles of dive strap. But then this watch is a very thin to wear watch, so maybe this this was a good choice. I mean, just take my opinions as no more than that an opinion. Um, I love this watch. Uh, the uh, screw down uh, crown, uh, sorry, screw down case back is also uh, got the Dorenzo logo on it. It's nicely done. It's, it did need to have an exhibition window that helps keep it thin. You've got the serial number engraved on the back as well. So every watch is going to be a unique serial number. So I love the watch. Uh, definitely one that will go in my collection one way or another, either if I back it on Kickstarter myself or if we end up uh, <laughs> stocking it in the store, which is actually my uh, goal here. Um, great looking watch. That's my color choice. Uh, love to hear what yours is. Love to hear what you think about it. If you have any questions, let me know. And uh, I'll be sending this watch on to the next reviewer. So I didn't kind of want to wax lyrical about it. I think the watch speaks for itself, stands up on its own merits. It's definitely one of the better watches this year. Uh, just not quite making it to the same level as the DRZ02, uh, which is a bit of a pity. I think the bracelets and straps are the letdown here more than anything else. Maybe the case, they could have done a little bit more. I'm asking a lot, really. I mean, if I was to see this case in another watch, I'd be praising it. But given how well Dorenzo come up with their design, then, uh, you know, maybe it's a little bit unfair of me, but I'm, I'm holding them to very high standards, maybe higher standards than other micro brands. So keep that in mind. But all kinds of features like the second hand with the loomed uh, circle passing directly over the uh, exact center of where the... Um, date window is and then also along the center line of that inner disc the eclipse disc really gorgeous and it's a great movement in terms of the bezel no back play 
not too tight, not too loose. I'm just doing this through the camera here. Um, so definitely works super well uh, as a watch. Very functional, 200 meter water resistance rating. This is going to be Swiss Super Luminova Loom. Let's get a oh, loom. Let's get some loom shots going. So I'm just going to hit the lights. I'll be right back. As with all of my reviews, they're live, they're kind of off the cuff. And then I just uh, bloopers and all put them out the way they are. So you get to put up with my ums and ahs, but at least you get something really realistic. Nothing scripted. The negatives as well as the positives. So that's going to gonna just light these up because these haven't been outdoors or anything. Um, so we'll get some loom on them. And the first one is this blue one. Just loom this up a bit. And the second one's this um, one on the right is the black one. So I don't know how well you can see the loom. Let's pull this closer so you get an idea. Again, the indices uh, are kind of small on this. Uh, I didn't really light it up for very long. So it's kind of like this. You can see um, the indices are very thin, uh, but at the same time, it's completely functional. It's strongly loomed. The bezel also helps uh, as it as it marks the same positions if you're not actually using it to time something. And the hands themselves are super strong. So I have absolutely no issue with this loom. It's a nice, strong loom. Uh, if it's going to fade, it's only because I loomed it for a few seconds or the camera's having trouble focusing. Um, but the hands are the main thing, as well as the... Uh, how should I put that? The, the uh, 12 o'clock marking on the watch itself. I would have expected a little bit um, loom to last a little bit longer, but I'm only... Uh, to be fair, I'm only looming this for a few seconds. I didn't have it outdoors or loom it up for a minute or two. So that's just, I would have expected things to be a little bit stronger on the bezel, perhaps. Um, normally that bezel pip is the most important. So you've got a triangle there. Maybe they'll consider doing that a little bit differently in production. Um, but definitely the triangle stands out. But uh, and the two triangles kind of align. That's kind of nice. So some thought has gone into this for sure. And this is a uh, different color loom on this other watch. It's fading a bit here, but I only loomed it once. Uh, so I don't know how well you pick this up on here, but it's kind of a blue loom on the left and a green loom on the right. So this will be BGW9 for the blue watch. Blue loom, very nice. And this will be C3, which is a stronger loom color on the uh, black watch. Don't know what the burgundy is going to be, but we'll find out. So again, if you have any questions, do let me know. Just going to hit the lights and uh, thank you for watching. Take care.